Here we go. We go. Green. Yeah, we'll come over here. Where's your bike? Huh? Where's your bike? It's right here. Oh, should I bring it right up there. a little bit more? Yeah. There you go. Oh, wait. Well, here, move it up. Oh, oh, oh it's done. Come on. Oh. So much technology, I can't stand it. Is it your phone, Nick? Yes. I got it on the on You airplane can put it boat. behind you. Is mine on? Is mine? You're watching Lynx 24. Connecting you to the community. Our top story. Meet the Toma City Council candidates. Welcome to your hometown news. I'm April Frelke. And I'm Nick Kaufman, broadcasting live on Lynx 24 and around the world on YouTube. Back to our top story. We will be interviewing Donna Evans and Wayne Kling, two of the Toma City Council candidates on the April 2nd ballot. Mm -hmm. We'll be discussing business, taxes, future plans for Toma, and all that's going to come up next. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I wanted to follow up a little bit on the on the YouTube thing. It is worldwide. It is and worldwide. a shout out to my sister Barbara, lives on Long Island, okay, in New York, and she watches every show on YouTube live. Okay? Well, hello. So, Good evening, Barbara. You, you well, and it all could be folks, in the morning. Good morning, and right? Our, our viewers can tell their friends and relatives that just tune in on YouTube. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's really good. So, um, this week's uh, Connect 24 is uh, brought to you by Toma Home Builders uh, of Quality Stratford Homes and Rudig Jensen in New Lisbon. Shake, Rattle and Roll on, uh, is what? Uh, oh, the Shake, Rattle and Roll uh, over at the Boys and Girls Club. They're having their annual gala at the Cranberry Lodge on Friday, April 12th at 5.30 p.m. The evening will celebrate club champions and raise funds to support life-changing programs provided to our community's youth through the Boys and Girls Club. Tickets are $60, okay, and have some fun. Come dressed up in your 50s sock hawk best. Now, 60 might seem Rocking a little bit and rolling, Nick. pricey, but I think there's a kind of dancing and food, and of course, it's a, it's a fundraiser. What so. kind of 50s food would you serve, maybe? Do they serve themed food? Well, maybe not. Well, I don't know. That's now to think about that it. That would be a fun. Know, I mean, pizza's been around for years, certainly back in the 50s. You know, so but it's a great cause because it's going right to the Boys and Girls Club of Toronto. Yeah, Sock Hop is a great theme, too. A lot, of good, a lot of good clothes can come out of that. That's right. Well, great news for New Lisbon's businesses. Emily Erickson is the new executive secretary for the New Lisbon Chamber of Commerce. Emily joins the chamber with much enthusiasm and willingness. She grew up in the area and is excited to share her ideas and meet some new people. Emily will be in the office located at 119 Bridge Street, Monday through Friday from 11 to 3 p.m. The phone number there is 608-562-3555, or you can email the chamber at nlchamber. That's without that. I should probably say that out, Nick, because there's no E at the end there. So it's going to be N-L-C-H-A-M-B-R at M-W-T.net. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that little subject. Yeah, I noticed there's no... Yeah, I happen to be on their site, though. Okay, on the I chamber. Was, I was amazed. They've got, I don't know, 78, 80 in that area, uh, businesses at in the, the chamber. That's that's amazing for a, you know, a modest-sized town. A like, small town of New Lisbon. Absolutely. You know, they bring in businesses from kind of the area, and it makes for a nice, robust group. You know, they have their little meetings every week or no, every once a month, I think, they have their business after You know, five. and that collaboration is so important. So <laughs> each business knows can support each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's particularly important, particularly in rural areas. The New Lisbon Library is hosting an uplifting seminar at uh, City Hall on Tuesday, April 9th at 6.30 p.m. You don't want to miss this. Motivational speaker and author of the book, How to Sparkle When the Sun Don't Shine, uh, Wendy Babcock inspires audiences to communicate more effectively by implementing the 21-day complaint-free challenge. 
Uh, she also serves as the director of the Complaint Free Trainers. Seminar is free to the public. Um, we had her on before, yes, didn't we? Yes, I've we, interviewed Wendy. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was really good. And considering the way everyone feels about the weather these days, you know, a complaint free uh, three weeks would be something else. That is say. a challenge. Something to imagine. Anyhow, that is. Right? And, she, and she gave us some, um, she has uh, bracelets to go with that. We all got bracelets at the studio oh. for the 20 to remind yourself to be complaint free. Well, I don't know if can, I can do that, but that's yeah. a, uh, that'll be, be worth the try. You though. know, a, a trick real quick, though, is to be thankful of something. Like, if you can kind of set your mind in gratitude mode, yeah, okay. you can kind of maybe skip the complaining. So, I don't really? know, it's a, Very just good. a strategy. It's like you got something out of that last time, okay. huh? Okay. Well, Toma Hospital is having a blood drive on March 22nd from noon until 6 p.m. They are particularly looking for people with type O negative blood and to add an extra incentive, everyone who attempts to donate will receive a coupon for a free pint of Culver's frozen custard from the Toma Culver's as part of their Give a Pint, Get a Pint promotion. And I wonder what flavor of the day is that at the pint from Culver's. Would it be like a red cherry or red raspberry swirl with the... With the maybe, it's, maybe it's O negative. It was, <laughs> what's your blood type? I think we, I did my blood in eighth grade in like a lab. I remember yeah. this. I think I'm AB. Uh -huh. But now that I think about it, I might be, is there O positive? Uh, yeah, there is an O positive. Yeah. O negative is a universal donor. You would you would be a uh, universal receiver. I'm an A positive myself. But uh, uh, the important thing is blood drive. Come give blood. That's the important thing. Okay? Yeah. Even though if, if it's not what they're looking for, they'll still take it anyhow. You could be sure. That's it. Um, I think you're up. Well, coming up next, our Toma City Council candidates are going to share their goals and visions for the future of Toma. Stay tuned with us to find out how they plan to make a difference in your community. Toma Homes, building quality Stratford homes. Country cottage. Wraparound porch. A kitchen that loves to be cooked in. A mud room with a washer and dryer. Custom design. Homes, custom homes built around your life. You want it, we'll find it, you got it. Price match and relax. That's the Rudick Jensen deal, sealed with a platinum level membership. Oil changes, done. Tires, brakes, alignment, all done. Car wash, you got it. Rudick Jensen Auto Mall, New Lisbon. Check out our inventory online at rudickjensen.com. Hi, I'm Phil Stewart. I'm the hospital CEO here at Toma Memorial Hospital. The 65 years that Toma Memorial has been here in this community is really a commitment by the community to support the hospital. They understand the importance of having health care right here for them. And the services that we provide, we continue to grow to meet that demand. We hope to enjoy the same kind of success at our new facility, Toma Memorial Hospital, taking care of you and your family close to home. I take it. You've heard the rumors. In the world wants to rule the wizarding world. Oh, Merlin. Hello. I cannot move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. Have you got anything in your case that might help? Genius. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Rent it now. Hi, I'm Josh Tully from The Josh Tully Show. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. Welcome back to your hometown news station. Donna Evans and Wayne Kling are running for the same seat on the Toma City Council Board, District 7. As promised, let's start the exchange of ideas between the candidates and welcome back to Lynx 24. Or welcome, or Donna. welcome. Thank and you. welcome, Wayne. Thank you very that. much. You, you both have seen the questions. That's great. Okay, and I will ask them exactly the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> the what, first question. Uh, yeah, what do you consider the two biggest issues facing Toma at this time, Donna? Well, I think two of our biggest issues is the growth in downtown Toma. 
Mm -hmm. revitalizing our downtown Toma and the growth in the south end. We're needing to get new businesses into our area and new growth. 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 Uh, particularly mm -hmm. in the south end. Particularly in the south end. Now with the hospital, I think we have a lot of potential for new growth to have their new businesses coming in, motels. Those are nice, two clean issues. Well, Wayne, what do you see as the issues? I see uh, revitalizing downtown uh, Toma. Uh, completing the Gurky building as far as oh. uh, uh, getting that completed and, and having it occupied in the, in the uh, residents of Toma can, uh, can use it uh, as a uh, place to eat and, yeah. and shop and different things like that. Yeah. Also, uh, I think priorities is built for Toma is building projects mm -hmm. and, and buying land to put some buildings in. So that means growth for Toma. Mm -hmm. And I also think that uh, we have some historical uh, buildings now in Toma, and that could bring in some mm -hmm. tourism. Great. You got a bunch of issues there. Yes. Yeah, that's that's terrific. Thank you. you well, we'll question? move on to our second question. Please do. What should the city of Toma's priorities be regarding growth and tourism? So, kind of the priority there for growth <coughs> and tourism. Excuse me. The Toma, the city needs to be progressive. We need to come up with innovative ways, thinking outside of the box. How can we invite new businesses into our area? What can we give them for incentives to come here? And then once we have these businesses here, we as residents have to support them. We have to mm -hmm. shop Toma first. In order to be a growing progressive community, we have to get the businesses here and we have to support them. And tourism is a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, the CVB works very hard around the state of Wisconsin to get let everybody know what we have in our great town. We may be small, but we have a lot to offer and a lot of things to see and view. So. And, well, I have uh, tax incentives to develop downtown, mm -hmm. uh, especially when the buildings are older buildings. They can, uh, we have a uh, state certified uh, tax incentive for owners of buildings downtown that can get 20 to 40 percent off their income oh. taxes the next year if they improve their buildings downtown the, uh, 40,000 and more. So that's a good thing. Economical development is important and that bring uh, with tax incentives and, and having our historical buildings bring in tourism. Okay. Now we also have a great theater, area community theater. We now moved our museum to a new place where the shutter building is. So that will open up in, on June 15th and the public will enjoy a new museum. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, you, those are good priorities, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thinking about the Long Range Planning Commission, uh, they've spent significant time trying to develop the downtown. And do you support the TID, that's Tax Incremental Districting, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you support that development? And where, what's the kind of effect is that going to have on taxes, property taxes, and what people pay in order to get that money from the state? Well, I think TIDs, they're a learning process, which I didn't know a lot about until I started getting into this. And then there used still to be TIFs, didn't they? Yeah, TIFs. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. good. So I'm still learning, so it's a good process. But it's very interesting. If they're managed properly, Okay. Um, I think they will work perfectly for our city, and they have proven that they've worked in our city. Okay. Um, we've got the three districts. Um, we have the growth districts out in by the uh, hospital. Oh, okay. And that is once the hospital opens its doors and the clinic, it's going to give revenue to the city of Toma. Oh, once we right, start yeah. getting the revenue, because it was not taxed before, mm -hmm. once we get that revenue, we'll be able to have that income. So then the taxes will be able to stay lower for the for that district for the, for the for the whole city of the Toma right because that we can borrow on our downtown revitalization district from that district okay, good. so I think if they're managed properly it's a good thing okay and uh, when is there going to be a, a cost associated with that I mean as, as the tips or the tids is that free money to us does it cost us anything at all uh, taxpayers uh, yes it does cost uh, uh, the taxpayers initially but that when the tids Success be are successful, right? You know there are a, f a sixty forty percent risk with tids. Oh, okay. but as long as they're successful and these tax incentives and increments are uh, are given for new businesses to come into town, mm -hmm. and uh, they're successful, then of course Tome is successful. So the also. hospital is certainly a good example of that. Right, and and, 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 and there's yeah. th there's a lot of projects that are in work now. We need a new fire department. 
Island. We need a new <coughs> ambulance center. There's mm. talk that we may uh, combine those two right. so that uh, that would be uh, cost effective mm -hmm. because the ambulance uh, service is self supportive. Mm -hmm. So that won't talk, uh, cost the taxpayers that much money. Right. Well, if you've got uh, one last thing to tell viewers about why they should vote for you, yeah, give me a word. Give me uh, give me a ten second each word that. or a sentence. Uh, other a than sentence you're an there. attractive woman, and <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I have no agenda. I don't have anything in particular that I want to promote or okay. make sure I get my my venue, mm -hmm. but I want to be here for the city, listen to the residents, the cons constituents, and support Toma for growth. That Thank you, great. Donna. Wayne? And I've been a, an alderman for three years, and my objective was to uh, do some things for the community because there was an outcry, especially for the uh, Boy Scout log cabin to be uh, restored, and, and some people wanted it destroyed uh, to put some other building on, on there, so I'm really big into history and Good. as far as the Excellent. historical uh, aspect right. of that Good. I also got a, a um, historical preservation ordinance and if I hadn't been an alderman then it would not have Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Thank That's you, great. Wayne. Thank you, both of you. It's Thanks been coming thank you very delightful much. having you here. Thank you. Well, coming up next, Doc Sheckel is back with the lab and he's going to get steel to actually start on fire. Well, that's something you don't want to miss. Stay I'm tuned. I'm glad I'm not with that one, huh? <laughs> Sounds <not> dangerous. <laughs> no, no, that's, well, that's right. well, here. Toma Homes, building quality Stratford homes. Country cottage. Wraparound porch. A kitchen that loves to be cooked in. A mud room with a washer and dryer. Custom designs. Toma Homes, custom homes built around your life. From the filmmakers of The Lord of the Rings comes a vision of our future. After the war, the survivors built cities in the skies, on the seas, but the deadliest ones were built on wheels. The man who controls this controls the world. We have to destroy London. Stay out of sight until I give you the signal. What signal? Trust me, you'll know. I'm not that subtle. Mortal Engines. Watch it now. Not on Netflix streaming. Hi, I'm Phil Stewart. I'm the hospital CEO here at Toma Memorial Hospital. The 65 years that Toma Memorial has been here in this community is really a commitment by the community to support the hospital. They understand the importance of having health care right here for them. And the services that we provide, we continue to grow to meet that demand. We hope to enjoy the same kind of success at our new facility, Toma Memorial Hospital, taking care of you and your family close to home. Americans love their cars, but when accidents happen, trust Abra Auto Body and Glass, America's most recommended to get it fixed right the first time, on time. Whether paintless dent repair from those dings, dents, and hail damage, collision repair from that nasty rear ender, or glass repair from that pesky rock chip, you'll get the highest quality repair from quality professionals. Call Abra Auto Body and Glass in New Lisbon at 608-562-6500. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. Welcome to the March edition of The Lab, sponsored by Dean's Refrigeration and Heating in Tola. I'm joined by Chris Dowley from Dean's. Today we'll feature a demonstration of several important concepts in surface tension, in refrigeration, and in heating. So first of all, we have a boiling unit, a flask unit here a condensing unit and so we have a, a way of taking dirty water or salt water and making it into pure water. Uh, salt doesn't show up well on television so I have some sand in here. So we're boiling the sand, sand and water. The vapor then is coming through the top here and coming going here and going round and round and round and round uh, where there's water coming out here. So 
whatever comes through this tube comes out here and condenses. So we have evaporation here and we have condensing over here. And the importance of surface area here is that the cold water coming in right here is continually going round and round and round, so there's a lot of glass in contact with the uh, vapor to condense it back into, from, from water into vapor. Right. And then over here, if you take a look at that, we have almost pure water. So here we have very sandy, dirty water, like, say, salt water in the sea. And over here we have drinking water. Now, it might turn out that sometimes that water is not quite as pure as you would like it to drink, but then they just do the process again. So the entire process of desalting the sea is done this way. So the importance there of surface area is to have a lot of the cold water in contact with the vapor coming down here. Now let's move over to uh, the idea of surface tension again, or surface area rather. Would you put a little bit of lycopodium powder there? Uh, just to tip it upside down. Oh, let me take this out of here. Oh, <laughs> oh just okay. pour some out there. This lycopodium powder is a spore of a plant. We could use uh, flour, talc, uh, any fine powder. If we try to ignite it, uh, basically the flame would go out if we had, a, say, a match. It will not burn. But if we would suspend this in the air, uh, then it would be uh, explosive. And that's the so-called grain dust explosion. So we're going to try that right here. So we'll have you, ooh, we'll have you dip, dip this in there. Put your thumb over the top or finger over the top. Okay, bring it out. Okay, and hold it level, and then hold your face back a little bit, but blow right over the top of that. Ooh, see a very simple example of surface. Let's do one more of surface area being important. Oh, oh, okay. If it's in a lump or closed and there's not much surface area, it won't even burn. But here, it will give a nice flame. Now, the third one we want to do over here is burn steel wool. Now, you say, well, you can't burn steel. You can burn steel if the surface area is sufficient, if we have enough area to burn. So we have some very fine steel wool here, and we're going to try to ignite it here. And you see it is burning. It won't burn completely, but it'll burn pretty good, like that, okay? Burning steel. Now, if it was, say, a nail in steel, it wouldn't burn at all, but having a lot of surface area makes it uh, so. Uh, the, another thing we can talk about as far as surface area is in our own lungs, okay. where we have an exchange of, of uh, air, oxygen, with the bloodstream. And our lungs are pretty small. However, if we take a look at all the little sacs in there, the alveoli, and we took that and stretched out for the surface area, it would be 33 feet on a side. So we have a tremendous amount of area in our lungs for the exchange of oxygen into our bloodstream. Well, that's examples, three examples that we have of surface area being very important in life. Thank you very much, Doc. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you for joining us on this edition, the March edition of the lab. And we want to thank our sponsor, Dean's Refrigeration and Heating in Toma. Hi, I'm Phil Stewart. I'm the hospital CEO here at Toma Memorial Hospital. The 65 years that Toma Memorial has been here in this community is really a commitment by the community to support the hospital. They understand the importance of having health care right here for them. And the services that we provide, we continue to grow to meet that demand. We hope to enjoy the same kind of success at our new facility, Toma Memorial Hospital, taking care of you and your family close to home. The Favorite is now nominated for 10 Academy Awards. Oh, I did not know that. Including Best Picture of the Year, <laughs> Best Director, Best Actress Olivia Coleman. It is fun to be queen sometimes. And Best Supporting Actresses Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz. It's more pure devious fun than any other great movie this year. Is it a bit like a party? It is not like a party. I think it is like a party. A perfect analogy. The Favorite. Rent before Netflix and Redbox on Lynx Networks. Video on demand. You want it, we'll find it, you got it. Price match and relax. That's the Rudick Jensen deal, sealed with a platinum level membership. Oil changes, done. Tires, brakes, alignment, 
all done. Car wash, you got it. Rudick Jensen Auto Mall, New Lisbon. Check out our inventory online at rudickjensen.com. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting, connecting you, you to, to the, the community. community. Well, Nick, it's time. It's time for this month in history by yours truly. Okay, folks, listen to this now. The original village of Mauston was incorporated in April of 60. Remember, the state was 48. Interestingly enough... 1860? Uh, 1860, okay. right? And the, and the statehood is 1848. We all, I think everyone out there knows that. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, not... Uh, the original seat, though, uh, was not in Mauston. The first location was actually the village of New Lisbon, but after some considerable wrangling between the two villages, and we'll thank Rose Clark for giving us information on this, it was finally made the county seat in the month of March of 64. A beautiful county building was erected in the center of the square, and the people of the village who furnished $5,000 towards its cost and are justly proud of it. Okay. And now, there's their photo of the building. Isn't that something? Isn't that that's really no, that's nice? That's not there anymore, correct? Yeah, uh, that is uh, correct. Okay, okay, very good. But let me tell you, there's there's more to the story. Okay, okay. is that you know in '48 when the statehood came, they they outlined the counties, and essentially Adams County was Adams and Juneau. If you look on a map, it was a total originally. rectangle oh, originally with okay. the Wisconsin River kind of going between it. Because there's 72 counties now. Yeah, currently. that's right. Okay, so but after a while, the Mauston people got a little petition together they got the legislature to go in and decide to split them down the middle make two counties and that happened but unfortunately for Mauston New Lisbon was still the county seat okay oh, well then a couple of years okay. later then uh, the Mauston people caught up with another resolution to uh, to relocate this county seat there was all kinds of voting going on and finally okay Mauston became the county seat however it was interesting to note and this is kind of interesting is that interesting to note that and one of the reasons why Mauston got it is because um, New Lisbon was accused of fraudulent voting. <laughs> Oh, really? They, yeah, and, really? And those are only men voting, too, correct? Well, Back in the 1860s? Well, uh, women uh, weren't allowed to vote? Well, that's, that's a very good point. Isn't that interesting? But, but what, what Rose had pointed out to us in an article was that they had 600 more votes from New Lisbon than, in fact, there were voters. <gasps> oh, so the <laughs> yeah. votes and the residents so, didn't match up. Yeah, so what okay, happened was okay. this thing was in the courts for many years before oh, it was sure. finalized in 64. So when you really think about it, from the time of statehood on until 64, almost 12 years before Mauston finally became the, uh, the county seat. Isn't that interesting? And, and some of the original settlers of Adams County were Yankees from New York. Okay. Oh, some oh, yeah. of your folk. <laughs> some of our folk was out your there, out there early. So yeah, there's, there's an awful lot of, of history that goes on with um, the division of the two, the, the, uh, the, the type of people, the farmers, the way they were settled, the various mm -hmm. ethnic backgrounds, they, it was all very different. It actually made a lot of sense um, for, uh, um, uh, for uh, Mauston to be uh, the county seat of Juneau County. And Oregon. at that time it was probably called Mogstown, correct? Actually, you, you got it. I remember it you bringing, talking about that before like at the farmer's market. M-A-U-G-H was Mog, right? Yeah. And they kind of anglicized that to, to, to Mauston. Yeah, so there you go. So there you go. That's our little. That's your bit, little uh, Nick history uh, uh, by Nick. Uh, history by Nick. Well, with a lot of help from our historical people, the, the you know Juno County, uh, the Borman House, and the Juno County Historical Circle. Society. Absolutely. Well, not a little bit of history, but the New Lisbon Lions Club have oh, been offering the yes their okay. 41st annual senior brunch, Saturday, March 30th at the New Lisbon Community Center. So the Lions usually do like a lunch kind of, but they're moving the time earlier in the morning. Now this is for seniors. This is for seniors, 55 okay. and older. I can so, get there. Yeah, you I should, can, Nick. Can, okay. Well, the Lions are honoring the New Lisbon School District residents that are 55 or better, and registration begins at 8 to 8.30 in the morning, and then brunch will be served at 9.30 a.m. So come stop out, enjoy some free food and bingo and fellowship. Call Lion John Stasny at 562 Three four zero seven to make your reservation, and please call by Wednesday, March twenty seventh. So that's a free 
brunch for our 55 and olders. Wonderful. Good old John Stasny. He's, a, he's around all the time. He does all kinds of stuff for the communities, communities at large around here. Right, and the Lions are very active We're good. in the well, New Lisbon community. Nice show. Yeah, yeah, and St. Patrick's Day, or a little bit of green. I, got a little bit I of really green don't own here. anything solid you got green. Some, you got green I, don't on have you. A, I was looking through my closet, I'm like, a lot of black well, and blues and pinks, no green. One so. of these days, St. Patrick's Day will fall on the uh, uh, news time. Okay, and we well, can really sure we'll get celebrate. The, when they, get the we, did a little, we did a little cooking show. We get the, but oh. I did buy myself a brisket so I can do corned beef and cabbage. Oh, yeah, very good. Okay, well, okay. there you go. Well, we want to thank Toma City Council candidates Donna Evans and Wayne Kling. And of course, Doc Shackle for this month's lab. And to all of you for tuning in to your hometown news where we're connecting you, you to, to the, the community. community.